3D printing is awesome and you can make almost anything, but it's not necessarily the most accurate way of making things. I've made this robot arm and it's working really nicely. But as all the mechanical bits are 3D printed, I don't completely trust that when I tell it to move by say 45 degrees, it actually moves by exactly 45 degrees. What I need is a way of closing the loop and knowing exactly where each joint is and not just where I've told it to be. In this video, I'm gonna solve the problem by adding sensors to each of the joints. I'm gonna be using these little AS5600 encoders. They cost about four quid each, and they work by detecting the position of a magnet which is held above it. As the magnet spins, it outputs the current position of that magnet over I squared C. I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna do this, so let's get rid of this armor sec and start with something much simpler. Here, I've got a test rig I made in one of my earlier videos. It's got a stepper motor at one end and an output. They're connected together by fishing line which runs through the belt and tubing. As the motor moves, it pulls one of the line which in turn rotates the pulley on the other end. I'm going to use this to simulate one of the axes on my robot arm so we can work out how to do this with less complications around it. I've set a magnet into the middle of the bearing here and I'll add our AS5600 to the outside of it. Right, I've hooked our contraption here up to a ramp spores and an Arduino Mega. I've got the stepper motor here, just connected through to one of the drivers, and our little sensor goes all the way around and plugs into the I squared C bus here. Let's write some quick code to make this work. So after messing around for a bit, it turns out that the code is really easy. I'm just setting up a new stepper motor here. In the setup function, we just tell wire, which is the Arduino I squared C library to start and then we initialize our sensor. In the loop, we're just reading in from serial, waiting for a new command to come in. If a new command comes in, we take that command and turn it into a position, and then we can calculate the error, which is the position that we want to move to, minus the position that we are at the moment. We'll turn that error into a number of steps, and then tell the stepper to move that number of steps. Let's run it and see what happens. If on the serial monitor I tell it to move to 45 degrees, you can see it moves straight to 45 degrees. If I go for minus 80, it'll move there as fast as it can. And then if we start trying to flex those lines by adding a bit of torque on there, you can see that the motor moves to catch up with that. And if we force it and it misses some steps, it still returns to exactly the right place. Before we can put these onto the arm though, we've got one last problem to solve. These boards are fantastic, but they all share the same I squared C address. The problem with that is, is if we try and hook multiple ones up to the Arduino, it's not gonna know which one to talk to. So we're gonna need something else. What I've got is this little board here, which is an I squared C multiplexer. It lets you connect up to eight different boards of the same address and then connect them through to the Arduino. When we want to read the angle off one of the boards, all we have to do is tell this to enable the right board and then read the angle. Then for the next one, we can just enable the next board and read that angle. It's time to start mounting the sensors to the robot. So starting with the base, I've got the sensor mounted right on the bottom in the middle here. And then inside the bearing, I've got the magnet attached in the middle again and a little space for the sensor to go. Onto the shoulder and elbow joints and I've got the sensor mounted to this little board which we can screw onto here. The magnet then sits in this little arm and that just screws straight onto the gearbox housing itself. So that then when the arm moves, the magnet moves straight across the sensor. On the wrist, we've got the two rotation axes, one here and one here. And on those, I've just mounted the board right on the bottom here. On the tilt axis, you can see the magnet right in the middle here. And we can just plonk the board straight on, if it's gonna let me. So that's the wrist together. We can put it straight into the robot and we're left with what looks like a huge mess of cabling. 
give me five minutes just to tidy this up and we'll carry on. Right, well, that took a little longer than five minutes, but it's not looking bad now. I'm going to have to build up some proper boxes for all this electronic scubbins, but for now it'll do. I've put all the logic that we developed before into the robot arm code here. This created a problem though. In order for the Excel stepper library to work, it needs the stepper.run function to be called about once every millisecond, and this loop here was taking more than a millisecond to complete. So what I've done is up in the setup function, I've just created a timer that runs every 0.5 milliseconds, and then that timer will just go through and run each stepper. Let's see what happens when we turn it on. Well, that's not perfect. We've got some crazy oscillations going on there. Let's see if we can work out what's going on. I've programmed the arm to move one of its joints between 0 and 45 degrees. Here, the red line is showing us the position that the motor thinks it's at, and the blue shows the actual position from the sensor. We can see it's not too far off, but due to the inaccuracies of the 3D printed gearbox, there's a bit of wiggle going on. I think that the oscillation is caused by the motor constantly trying to correct and then overshooting. What we need is a way to damp this down, a bit like a shock absorber in a car. Instead of adding all of the correction at once, we'll just add a bit at a time until the motor is back on track. What I'm doing now is every 10 milliseconds, I'm reading the angle from the sensor and the current position of the motor and then resetting the current position of the motor to 70% of its current position plus 30% of the sensor position. This means that we don't get all of the correction from the sensor added at once, and it happens over a couple of iterations. And now with all that done, we can finally get the robot moving. I've got a quick Jupyter Lab script here set up, which lets me just move the robot around. And I've got a series of commands programmed in, so let's see what happens when we run it. So there we are, it's all working. It's moving faster than it was before, and even if it skips steps, it still goes to exactly where it should do. We can see if we start applying a bit of torque onto these to try and move them, the steppers will make up for it there. And if we put a load of torque on here, you can hear the stepper motor skipping, but it still goes back to where it should do. Well, I think we're far enough along now with this robot arm that we can throw a camera on the front here and try some funky tracking shots with it. The CAD and code for all of this is available on my GitHub page. Go on, press those like and subscribe buttons, you know you want to. I'll see you later.